What the fuck? Based on your nose? Oh, I hope not. I'm gonna have to have some big glasses. I think you should take pride in it. Measure, like I fucking you measure the width of your face. The XL. And then like do the nose. Soft or hard? Not my face, the measuring tape. <laughs> 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 from, from the balls or <laughs> like like soft measuring tape this way or measure this I think hard. straight I think hard good. you measure hard measure. I'm trying to buy glass <laughs> you, me you measure hard do you measure hard or soft <laughs> yeah we need to see what's going on here this is the website I'm on <laughs> oh my god so I can't just go online and buy a pair of glasses I have to measure my bridge my width my height I don't want all that I just want to I just want glasses why is everything so hard that's a good question thank you McKenna <laughs> <laughs> everyone's over here and silent like their lives are easy <laughs> We know our glasses. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Do you? <laughs> How'd you get it? Because mine's a mystery. Are we ready to start? Yeah, we're ready to start. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of the Kim Congdon Takeover. I'm Kim Congdon here with myself, Kim Congdon. We have baby Zaves, Zaves, and McKenna in the house tonight. And Lee. Wow, we have a packed house. Yeah. Lee, are you hanging or are you just like, what are you doing? Are you I'm, hanging? I'm just getting you guys set up. Oh, okay. Here. Jesus. So. Jesus, Xavier, what the fuck did you just pull up? <laughs> oh my God, Xavier just pulled up the saddest Reddit thread out of nowhere. I'm unhappy with my pregnancy because I've had an abortion before. Fuck, dude, I don't know how to make this funny. <laughs> I can't make this funny. What is this, uh, the big boss challenge of comedy? <laughs> Fuck. Yes. All right, we moved to Comedy Store Studios. You know, I, I think we should take bigger <laughs> Yeah, we're live at the Comedy Store Studios, and this lady's unhappy with her pregnancy. She had an abortion two years ago. She wasn't ready financially, mentally, and emotionally two years ago. A part of me always felt awful about this, but I was never really sad that I did what I did. Hell yeah, that sounds like a wrap. Um, I think that I'm a very logical and practical person, and two years ago I felt like I was irresponsible to keep the baby and still feel the same way now. So I never felt or really guilty or regretted what I did. And even months after, I never changed my mind. Instead of sadness, regret, or anything like that, I started to worry about something else. I started to worry how about how whoa, blah, blah, blah. I started to worry about how I would feel and when I got pregnant again and decided to keep it. Now I'm a few weeks pregnant and me and my partner, same partner, both agree that we're both finally in a good place and then re we're ready to start a family. But I was only happy for a while when I found out. I was happy because this is something I've wanted for a long time. Happy that I'm in the right situation to have this baby and happy I'm finally building this life with my partner but then I started to feel really guilty not guilty for what I did two years ago she's making it very clear she does not feel guilty about the abortion just so we're just clear. so you know I don't give a fuck that I abort she couldn't have said it more times she's like I don't give a fuck that I aborted my baby um uh, but I was only happy, blah, blah, blah. Not guilty for what I did two years ago, but guilty for what I'm doing now. I feel like I have no right to be happy about this baby. It, I mean, what makes this baby more deserving to live than the one I aborted? And again, I don't regret the abortion I had. It's more that, <laughs> again, <laughs> again, you guys, just in case we didn't pick up on it, she does not regret this abortion. <laughs> It's more that I don't feel right that I have the right to be happy or celebrate this one. To continue my spiral, I'm additionally worried that even when the baby is out, I'm going to think like this. How my child is alive knowing I gave one up before him. Or I'd ask myself why I'm so happy with this child when I, I so easily, <laughs> she was so happy about this abortion, <laughs> so easily aborted. One. I mean, literally, I was out the next night. I was out that night. Yeah, I had a big pad on, but I da still danced in VIP. And then I forced myself to just be unhappy because, again, I have no right to be happy about this child when I wasn't about the first one. Now, I honestly don't know what to do or think. I don't know what to do with these thoughts and feelings. And honestly, I'm worried I'm going to feel this way forever. Any advice? I like the number one rule on Reddit is be nice. <laughs> um, OK, this is what I think. This is my personal opinion. You obviously don't care that you had this abort. Either two things are happening. You actually care. And you keep saying you don't. Which is 
an issue already before the abortion, just a separate issue. You do care. Or you don't care, but then if you don't care, you have to care because you feel guilty. So you're already lying. You're lying to yourself. You actually care. And if you don't care, you wouldn't care about the whole thing. You'd be like, yeah, I don't care. And I'm having this baby and I'm happy, but you do care. And um, I don't know what to tell you, bitch. (laughs) I don't know. This is so hard to give advice on. It's like it sucks, but... I, it, you're going to have this baby and you're going to have a family. And I kind of, it kind of feels like you're already planning to put like this weird guilt on this baby for being alive and your other one not. And I think that this is, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know what to say, dude. Like that, that like, yeah. an abortion's fucking probably mentally taxing. I've never had one. I've deserved a few. <laughs> I've never had one. I don't judge women for getting them. I don't judge women for being against them either. I understand both sides of the story. Um, so I don't really have an opinion because I've never had one and I don't know personally what it feels like to be in there. But yeah, if you're feeling guilty, I would say talk to a therapist and get off Reddit. It would be my best advice. Yeah, that's all. How do I tell my friend she's smelly? <laughs> cunt Lord 444. If you're Cunt Lord, it should be easy. I've known this girl for two years now. I would consider her one of my closest friends, but she is very smelly. I could tell her pH off is she doesn't keep up with herself hygiene wise. Every time I see her, she smells like a fish box armpit maxed with ew, max masked with perfume. I love her so much as a friend. I put up with it because I feel like it wasn't much of an issue for me and I thought I could see past it. But now we're we're closer. I feel the need to tell her. I don't want to come off as rude or that I'm making fun of her. I truly just want my friend. I don't want my friend out here smelling bad. But does she have... But she does have a shower moderately stocked with hygiene products. I feel bad saying anything, and it could be in hormone imbalance. How do I approach the situation? Should I even say anything? Honestly, yeah. If you're close friends, you got to say something. I'm thinking about it now. If if Shank smelled, I think there have been times when me and Shank have told each other, you need deodorant. (laughs) That's a good friend. Straight up. I mean, we've been friends for over a decade. And, and then, but like, what about like if you guys are in like public? Is there is there a way that like you you pull her aside or are you just going for? Oh it? yeah, you shoot a text. Shoot say a text. you need deodorant, my sister. It's in my bag. I honestly, you have to tell your friend. I always tell my friends. I tell them if they have something on their face. Only my friends, a stranger. I'll let you stink and have something on your face the entire time we're talking. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I can't have secondhand embarrassment. I don't have secondhand embarrassment for my friends because I'm like, we know each other. I just um, I just saw something about uh, some people when they have schizophrenia or other like neurological disorders, there's mm-hmm. a distinct smell that they have coming out of their armpits. Whoa. Um, that it, it sounds similar to what was described in this Reddit. But Wait, this lady... This? Yeah, oh, your I, friend don't stink. She's just a schizophrenic. <laughs> she's a little schizo. <laughs> she just... Whoa. Whoa. But like the like other people can smell it. It's oh, not like yeah, like other people can smell like it was a nurse and she's like, I'm a nurse and I can tell when someone has schizophrenia by how they smell. Whoa. Parosmia. Yeah. Parosmia is like distorted olfactory sensation in the presence of an odor. This olfactory disorder can affect the quality of life of most patients who experience it. Yeah, that's like a sensation, but it's like their actual like. But you're talking about schizophrenics just have a specific smell. Yeah, that's like sneezes. That's like (laughs) sneezes. Yeah, Yeah, what uh, the way we like to ask this uh, mechanic? Can you smell sneezes? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like the yeah, it's like this kind of spit smell. Yeah, it's like a it's like a dry. It's like if you left spit on a glass in the sun. Yeah, yeah. It smells like that. Smells like great. sick. You can smell sick. You can smell sick. I can smell sick too. Sometimes I've, I think I've said this. I walk into a room and I go, "Oh, someone needs to go to the doctor in here." Every once in a while, I'll smell death in a room. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Every once in a while, I'll get a whiff of death, and I'll go, "Whew, uh oh, that's an issue. That's not good. You can't tell someone you smell death on them." Yeah. That's jarring. But um, dude, I've had 
the absolute longest morning. I have I I wear contacts. You guys wear contacts? I don't. Fuck, dude. It is a nightmare to have bad eyes. I want to get the um I want to get the is it laser or LASIK? LASIK. I want to get the I, I, LASIK for my Is it LASIK? For yeah. eyes? Yeah, I think it, it probably is a laser. And it's laser for hair. Yeah, but yeah, I, yeah then I think LASIK uses a laser. Yeah, yeah, Very, yeah. Confusing. Very confusing. But I want to get the LASIK for my eyes, but then I saw that some people that get it have like this debilitating pain where like most of them kill themselves. Oh my God. Yeah, and so now I'm scared and I'm like, okay, I'll just keep doing contacts. But I have contacts that I have to get rid of every two weeks and I was just traveling for like the last three months and I didn't get a chance to order them and I lost a bag that had my extra contacts in them and my glasses. So I call the guy, I call the place. I'm already worn my contacts for over a week and I don't know where my glasses are. So I call the place. I'm like, Hey, I just wanted to order more contacts. I, I lost a bag while traveling. And they're like, your prescription was actually up last week. Classic classic life. One thing about life is if you, when you finally go do it, it's about a week too late. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, if I've learned anything in my 33 years, you know what? Stop being disappointed. When something goes wrong, I think I'm telling this to myself, by the way, when something goes wrong, just it's, you should kind of expect it. Expect everyone to be a fucking idiot. Everywhere you go, go, this is going to take, if you're, if you're going to the bank and you go, this should take five minutes, multiply that by f 10 at an hour so that when you go in and it's only 25 minutes and you expected it to be five, you're like, wow, that was half the amount of time I thought it would be. Cause nothing's good. Nothing's quick. People are run down. No one's working like they used to. I don't blame the people. I blame the companies. I don't blame the people because everyone's fucking tired and just barely making any money to survive and just doing their best. But God damn it. Is it punishing everyone? I went and got my glasses done today. First of all, I'm sick of being tricked for my money. I'm not even kidding, you guys. I am sick and fucking. <laughs> this is a funny picture, by the way. <laughs> I am sick and fucking tired. I went to an eye exam. These are the glasses I picked out that I really wanted. I really like these. They were a pink frame. The bottoms were metal. I feel like I could wear these and be chill in them. They're a little funny from this angle. But I, first of all, when you go to the eye exam, I go in. And they're like, okay, this is, I have high eye insurance. So I get an exam every year. They go, your exam is going to be $130 on top of your insurance, which seems high already. Yeah. Seems high. I don't know. How much is the exam? $500 to get an eye exam now? I have to go every year. Like, it's just like, it already seems high, but I'm like, whatever. I'm like, okay, great. So then I go in. And they go, before we start, uh, we do see that you had astigmatism last time, which is that my eyes, can we Google what astigmatism is? I'm not even. It's something to do with your depth, right? Like, I, I feel like I have astigmatism. It's something to do with something, astigmatism. An imperfect curvature of the eye that causes blurred distance and near vision. Okay, so my eyes curved. Let's see. Normal vision. Oh, it's what makes the lights on the car have like streaks, like lights have streaks. Yeah. I, I get That's astigmatism. Oh, I think I have that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, thought, I, thought, I thought everyone saw that. I think it's normal to have like one streak, but astigmatism, they're really long and there's multiples of yeah. them. Yeah. You have like a weird. Cr so. So if you have, so then I go in for my thing and they go, oh yeah, since you had astigmatism last time, it's going to actually be, um, 40 more dollars for this exam. But if you don't have astigmatism, it won't be, we just wanted to let you know. So now after insurance, I'm looking at 170 for my eye exam. I'm like, all right, cool. Sounds good. We know that I will have astigmatism and I will have to pay. So then we're about to start and she goes, one more thing. We do have to do, we have to dilate. This is, by the way, we have to record. This is why I texted you and I was like, I can't come. Oh, right. I'm going to have to do something else because they go, we're going to have to dilate your eyes. I'm like, okay. So they bring me into the room. When they're about to dilate, I go, hey, am I going to be able to drive? 
because I remember getting my eyes dilated a long time ago and I couldn't see for like hours. I couldn't even open my eyes for like hours, literally. And my mom brought me out with my eyes covered into the car. And she goes, yeah, we don't really recommend you drive very far, maybe like five minutes. And I'm like, yeah, I don't live five minutes from here and my work is not. So no, she was like, yeah, so you can do that and kind of wait in our office that so they want you to wait around the frames they want you to buy. Oh. Or I could pay another $50 to do an immediate retinal scan. That's the same thing. They get the same answers, but it's $50 to do that instead of wait in the office. Isn't that sick? Yeah. Isn't that sick? Instead of being a good company and replacing the eye drops with the retinal scan and having more customers come there because they don't have to do the dilation, they're going to charge you, but not tell you that, oh, come with someone that could drive you home because your eye, even if I knew I would have brought my boyfriend, he could have driven me to the pod. And by the time I got here, I would have been good. But they don't tell you that you can't drive so that you're stuck there so that you choose the more expensive option. I'm sick of being ripped off. Don't you guys feel like this is everything? Yeah. yeah. Everything is like I'm backed into a corner until I run my fucking credit card. And you can't have a, a quality life if you're not spending money anymore. It's true. You live a below quality life. You're you're pinching pennies. You're you're scared to buy a little treat at the gas station. If you're scared to buy a treat at the gas station, you're being abused by your country. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. What are we doing? I'm so sick of hearing about politics in the election, for the love of God. Don't ask me who I'm going to vote for or if I'm going to vote. I'm not going to vote. It doesn't literally matter. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a fucking scheme. None of it's real. It's a lie. 9-11 <laughs> did really happen. The buildings did come down and those people did die. And I think that's when people are like, 9-11 wasn't real. That's what upsets them. But um, they knew it was coming. They you knew. Gotta, you got to be careful. Your phone's going to listen to you and put you on a list. What do you want me to say? We're being fucking tricked. Why is a root canal $1,500? We're being tricked. We're being tricked. Why are people spending $20,000 on ice purses for the Met Gala, but a root canal is $1,500? Unfollow, unfollow all the influencers. Follow comedians and no one else. <laughs> And let's get our money back, people. All right, people. Warmer, sunnier days are calling. You need to fuel up with factors. No prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals in time for summer thanks to the menu of chef-crafted meals with options like Calorie Smart, Protein Plus, and Keto. The Keto one's amazing. Oh, yeah. The Keto one fucks. <laughs> factors fresh, never-frozen meals are dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. So no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great-tasting meals. Make today the day you kickstart a new healthy routine. What are you waiting for? Guys, summer's coming up. We are all trying to fucking meal prep, get ready for the hot weather. Um, and I think that Factor makes it a lot easier. I, a lot easier so that you can spend more time outside enjoying that sun. I mean, they have 35 different meals and more than 60 add-ons to choose from every week. So you And there's always new flavors to explore. You can crush your wellness goals this May with dietitian approved meals and ingredients that you can trust. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy nutrition nutritious options. Treat yourself to restaurant quality meals that feature premium ingredients like filet mignon, shrimp, and blackened salmon. I love the blackened salmon one. I love the blackened salmon too, but I just had the shrimp. Yeah. The shrimp does not play. Oh, I got to try the shrimp. It saves a lot of time. Yeah, keep your kitchen time to a minimum. Factor meals are ready in two minutes. So much time saved. I, I hate cooking. It takes so long in the, cleaking, in the cleaning and the prepping. This is no shopping, no prepping, no cooking, no cleaning up. It's effortless for your life style. You choose from six menu preferences to help you manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced meals. And we get, I think it's 50% off. Yep. Head to factormeals.com slash thisb50 and use code thisb50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code thisb50 at factormeals.com slash thisb50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is still active. 
I don't know what to say. But yeah, so these glasses. So then after my appointment, I'm like, okay, my appointment ended. I already moved the pod because I thought it was getting dilated. Then I didn't get dilated. So now I have this extra time, like this extra 30 minutes or so. And I'm like, okay, you know, I do need a good pair of glasses. So I go, I go, oh, so what about my glasses? They go, oh, you actually have a $150 rebate through your insurance for glasses. I go, sweet. I could probably get a nice pair of glasses. I start looking. All the glasses are in the 400s, 500s, which I don't know. Maybe I'm cheap. Maybe I'm crazy, but that seems high. But even the $400, $500 ones in my head, I'm like, oh, $150 off, you know. If I spend $350 on a really nice pair of glasses I'm going to take care of and they're going to look nice and I'll be able to, like, not wear contacts all the time and rest my eyes, it's worth it. I spend 40 minutes looking at glasses, dude. I find these. I go up to the lady, ask her to price them. I want you to guess how much these were. I don't know. How, how much do you think they are? Um, 1200 By the way, they're kind of ugly. They're ugly cute. We can all admit they're not even that good. Yeah, the, like, there's nothing seemingly on them to where I was like, oh, that's going to cost a lot of money. McKenna, t- guess 1200 What's your guess? I, I was thinking like like five six like I probably like right seven seventy five wow eight hundred dollars for those now I was shocked and this is how they get you they look at you like you're poor when you're shocked that's the next scam they emotionally manipulate you to feel bad about your own job and the fact that the economy's fucked and you're not getting paid enough and and then they make you feel guilty at the stores. They go, <laughs> like, 800 is not a lot. So now I'm going, okay, so my exam's like one, what were we at with the exam? 160? This is before, this is just for the exam because I have astigmatism before I've ordered the contacts. So the contacts is going to be another 150, I at least I think. So we're looking at 350 just for the contact lens and exam. Now we're looking at 800. I'm just about to spend $1,100 to get a refill of contacts and a pair of glasses. Is that, am I, I'm sorry, am I cheap? Or is that like kind of like people should be saying something? It's bananas. Just to see. Yeah, like you just to see. <laughs> Literally, I'm not asking for like, and you know, these glasses were like $800 and they were the most stable feeling ones. The ones that were $400 felt like so cheap too. And like they make it so that the ones that look aren't hideous and you're not embarrassed in and feel the most comfortable are the most expensive. They literally, if you don't have money, you don't get comfort. It sucks. Yeah. because It's really unfair. It's just like you order online and it's like a, like a $3 pair that you have no idea of. Exactly. Where it came from, what's in it, like, I don't know. You don't even know if the website's a scam at that point. And so you're going to these legit places because you're like, you know, this is a real business. And then they fuck you. They just fuck you. And it's not fair. I mean, I could have gotten these. I want, I'm not saying that I'm like so cheap. That I could have gotten these, but I'm like, just out of principle, I could have $40 million, but just out of principle, it seems bizarre. So then I go online. And I Google the description of these glasses that were 775. And I find these. Are these not the same glasses? Yeah, those look pretty similar. For $25. Wow. Are they not the same glasses? Like, not even do they look similar. Are they not the same frames? Do we see anything different in them? I think those are them. They look like the same exact glasses are $25 on this website. Not only are they $25, you can Klarna them and pay $5 a month. So what are we doing? Why is everything a scam? Yeah, like um, I, I asked a lady about her blowout recently, and she said she had the Dyson Airwrap. And uh-huh. It's like a, one of those blow dryers that kind of sucks your hair into a curling thing. I've used and, it, yeah. Yeah, I was like, it's got to be like, what, two, three hundred dollars? Because she's like, it's kind of expensive. It's like six hundred dollars. It's like six hundred or seven hundred dollars. Like, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it just like makes your, but I'm like, that's crazy. And then there's, they're on Timu for like Dyson Airwrap dupe, $20. And 20. Like, no, what literally. Do? Like, what's, why is it so expensive? There's these crazy upcharges just for like brand. I mean, it is nuts. Yeah. It's like a, and, but they do punish you. If you buy the Timu one, I bet they'll, they'll short circuit off. something in it that it dies in a month. 
and you go, I should just, and then you bought the Timu. Everything's a scam. I'm, I guarantee you the Timu ones, they've set them off so that they die quick so that you buy both. I'm telling you. <laughs> and- everything, everything. Everyone's trying to rip you off all the time. I think they did an experiment with the Starbucks drink. The sizes are the same, I think. They're the same amount of drink. Which is also like this much coffee, like nothing. Yeah. They put like a, such a little amount of coffee and then ice to, yeah. Look at this. The local Starbucks ordered drinks in three sizes and then measured how much we actually received. The tall came to a cup and a half. The grande contained two cups. And the venti held about two and a half cups. Okay. But this is all no ice. Like, I, you can easily see how they get that, that scam going. Like, this is if you're drinking black coffee, I guess. Yeah, and I don't know how much Starbucks paid for this news report to go out and be like, there actually is more in each drink. <laughs> go to exposing Starbucks scam. Go up. Click that bottom one. Yeah, that one. I want to see this video. This guy looks like he is, exposes big companies for a living. <laughs> this is my news, this guy. Okay. Completely full. This Great. Is the same size. Let's see it. It has the same amount of volume. So mm-hmm. it puts the same amount of coffee. Look. 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 Here, look. Check this out. Get the fuck out of here, dude. Look, dude, it's even a little bit overflowing. Look at that. It's overflowing. There's no fucking way. Do you think that's real? How is this have more than this? I don't know. And then they just charge you three different prices. I went to the water park with Sarah. If you go and buy the tickets at the door, it's ninety dollars. If you buy them online next to the door, it's forty. <laughs> Just sell them for forty. Stop fucking people. Everyone be nicer. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's like so crazy. It's so crazy. It's like just moms that want to take their kids to the water park and thirty-three year old comedians that like mushrooms. It's like nice people going. I'm done, dude. When's the last time you got scammed? Have you got got yet? Oh, I got I got scammed the other day. I walked down the street <laughs> and I got I'm like <laughs> I, I I got a euro and this like this lady was so nice. She was like uh she's like Russian, maybe Ukraine, like something like that. And then I was like, yeah, can I get uh the shawarma? And I was like, it says ten fifty. And then she was like, yeah, do you want to make it like a meal? And it says five dollars more for the meal. And I was like, okay. And I walked out of there and I checked my my card and then it was she charged me thirty five dollars and I was like, how did we get there, dude? That happened to me in New York recently with hot dogs. No, there and that should be like you should. I'm sorry, that woman should go to jail. (laughs) She just stole money for you. She just stole fifteen dollars from you. I have a a bad one that happened um, not too long ago. My friend's my friend's dog died while I was at her house, and it's like she was in town (sighs) to go. First of all, that is it was very depressing, rough. Um, so I'm like, there is her emotional support. We're going through her her mom who just passed away's things, and then the oh god, yeah, the dog dies while she's in town. So we take it to the vet because her dad's gone. And then the vet, like, did her dad die? No, no. <laughs> He's alive. Like, <laughs> McKenna, you need to stay away from this friend. She doesn't have good luck. Um, but yeah, so we like uh, the vet. First of all, we're in a room for like an hour with the dead dog. It like smells like a dead dog. Like she's having us sit there for so long. I'm like, this is so insensitive. And then she puts the dog on a scale. And, like, we see the number on the scale. It's 11 pounds. And then when we go to checkout, she gives us all this paperwork. And she's like, okay, we'll call you with, like, the cost and everything. Like, we go by weight. And I'm looking at the paperwork. She put that the dog was, like, 27 pounds. (gasps) And I saw on the scale that it's 11 pounds. We were, like, talking about it. And then we were, like, in the car. My friend's all kind of shaken up. And I was like, we're going back in there to say something. Like, this is insane. And then she's like, oh, yeah, like, I'm so sorry. I must have typed it in wrong. And, like, then we asked about the prices for the weights, and it would have been, like, double the price to get this dog cremated. Dude. Um, I was livid. Dude. Everywhere you go. (laughs) Even when you're grieving your dead dog, they're weighing it like a cup of Froyo. Yeah. And (laughs) double charging you. Yeah. I'm like, why why pick on the person who just lost a dog? It's sick, McKenna. It's fucking sick. I mean, I I hate to just be complaining this whole podcast, but I hope that people can listen to this and relate. Uh, If you've been scammed before... 
leave your latest scam in the comments so maybe we could start telling each other about these scams there maybe there should be we should have like a list of ongoing scams that we could all avoid because if your dog dies you should know to check the weight yeah because they overcharge you for the weight what are other things i had a landlord once tried to blame me for the plumbing and was and was in cahoots with the plumber the landlord oh, this is another thing the landlords and the maintenance companies are in cahoots to charge tenants. That's another thing. There'll be a clog. Oh, yeah. One time I got out of clog because I went to the guy and said, show me. And he had no clog. I go, show me the clog. He had no clog. I said, you're not charging me. There's no clog. You can't charge me for a clog that's not there. <laughs> and he was in cahoots with the owner. The The owner. All these companies are working together. I'm even com the internet companies. When you're going to set internet up, it, I feel like one's worse, so they could double charge you for this one. But they're both that company. Everything, dude. We're being fucking scammed. We're being scammed. Everybody. We need to stop. What? How do we stop it? What are the biggest scams? Let's look up some of the biggest scams right now. Reddit. Go to Reddit. Let's see Reddit. I want to see what Reddit has. Not yeah. Cause you know what? I'm done with the news in there. They buy this is another thing. Stop watching the news. The news isn't real. You have to get this is how you get information. This is from the collective. This these are upvoted upvoted information from the collective. At this point, we can't look up to anybody for the truth. We have to talk amongst each other. That just is. Do I sound crazy? No, a lot, there, there are a lot of scams out there. Funerals, weddings, yes. And pretty much every other thing we blindly accept to be insanely expensive without thinking about it. Yeah, funerals are so expensive. Funerals are so expensive and you're already grieving. It's like the dog thing. You're already taking these families and you're fucking them up, dude. I, and they always try to like downsell you. Like if you ever uh, like have to go through that process, like, well, you could put them in this, but... It's basically cardboard and you like you everybody will know you don't love them. Yes. Or <laughs> yes, and it's like they're dead. Put them in the cardboard. <laughs> like we all need to start waking up and being like just put them in the cardboard and we'll do a beautiful cer ceremony on top of it. I don't know what to say, but then they're like, yeah, we have to publicly display the cardboard in the town paper. You know what I mean? They're like every cardboard we sell, we have to tell which family would do this. <laughs> It's like, they'll get you. They'll emotionally abuse you. What is this? I've only had my... Okay, let's keep going down. A lot of um, love. Cable TV. There's one. Seriously, Spectrum person that signed me up on the phone gave me a price and simply neglected to tell me it was a promotional rate. And it went up 50% after a year. I mean, constantly. We got to start scamming back. Oh, yeah, with Spectrum, I just, they always call me for their box, and I'm just like, you come get it. I'm not mailing it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, and you're not charging me for your box either. Yeah, yeah. I'm calling, and I say, return it, and it's on you. I don't know what to tell you. Oh, God. What else do they have on here? Go down. Go down, go down. Oh. Insulin prices? Don't even get me started on medicine. Oh, dude. I, that's vitamins? The cost of vitamins? Sketchy. Oh, man. Also, vitamins in general are, like, there's so many scam vitamins. Oh, yeah, the ones that aren't real. Like, they're, like, filled with um, different fillers. What? Yeah, there's, you have to be very careful with vitamins. Really? Yeah, because a lot of them, a lot of them, when they test them, they're just not doing what they say they're doing. That's really scary. I yeah, I remember, there's like chalk I remember in them. Forever ago, I found out the what was it? The fish oil, fish oil is like a scam. Oh yeah, the vitamin is a billion, multi-billion dollar business. Well, so as soon as people go into the billions, I think we should stop, start questioning things. People change. Oh god, dude! Look up vitamins filled with chalk. What? Oop. Cock. That's oh. okay. <laughs> Whoa. On December 1st, 2023, Bio Mills PVT issued a recall of 24,000 units of Spring Valley 
biotin and collagen liquid natural berry flavored products due to potential mold. Well, that's not good. Oh, no. like, um, look at my skincare. <laughs> yeah. Herbal supplements filled with fake ingredients. Oh no, dude. What can we and these are people that and and they you know what? It seems like they go after people that are trying really hard. Yeah, like uh, do, you, do you have you guys ever felt like you've been like 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 scammed by like a super spiritual person? That's another way I feel like I've been. Oh yeah, that's another scam. <laughs> like... Mediums, dude. Yeah, it's like anywhere that you're vulnerable emotionally, someone's preying on your wallet. Yeah. Honestly, if you're trying to get healthier because you're sick, someone's trying to fucking scam you. If you're like trying to eat healthy, you're still getting scammed. I'm trying to eat healthy, and then like. Ah, oh, dude, I was eating a lot of eggs, uh, the cholesterol. I, I can't get into it. I can't get into it. Nothing's good for you. Nothing's good for you. You try to fix it. The vitamins are filled with chalk. You try to fucking get some glasses. You're getting scammed out of that. What was the last one we just said? Um, the oh, mediums. Medium. The mediums. Yeah, that's sick. It yeah. is. It's because it's like, like you like I, I always kind of see it it's like the people that they're with always look very sad. Like I'm like they're like just looking for anything. Dude, I have the funniest medium story. I'm one of my friends who does bro like off Broadway shows. She's like a really incredible writer and a cool person. She decided to write this crazy off Broadway musical that included a medium that was like this like TV medium and. But the but the play was also about like his life as a child and his like child abuse and him going through all this abuse. And then he was a gay medium and he, it also had gay backup dance angels, this musical. <laughs> <That's actually pretty laughs> so the whole the whole thing was about like the story of this little boy who gets abused and but he can also see dead people through his abuse trauma, I think. It circuits something in his head where he can see into the spiritual realm. But oh the idea... The sixth sense was fashion. Exactly. <laughs> if the sixth sense was gay. Sixth sense on Pride Month. Um, and the whole musical, her idea for it, which I think is still a cool idea, but what seeing it executed was honestly one of the wildest things I've ever seen in my life, was that in the middle of the musical, the medium would stop and read people. And so random people were coming to get read by this guy during the musical. So they'd be like dancing. And I remember, and Big J tells this story too, because uh, Big J was there, Lewis was there, all the guys were there and we were watching and they were doing like, I'm just a spiritual medium. And there's like angels like, spiritual medium. I'm just a spiritual medium. And then she had her 12 year old son Come the my friend who made the play come read as the child of the medium like a, the child version. He was like, "Dad came into my room again tonight," <laughs> and then and then it'd be sad, and then he'd back up into the dark. So it's like spiritual medium, and then he'd stop, and then the real medium would come out and start reading, and and then he'd do like he'd be like, "Does anybody in here lost a father figure with a name that starts with like G, maybe like a Greg or?" A, um, something like that. And someone would go like, my, my dad's name. And I, it was the girls next to me. And I heard one sister go, I think that might be dad. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what you want to hear. That might be dad. That's, a, that's like, a, that's sadder than the baby shoes poem. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That might be dad. It hurt me <laughs> in my soul. And, and then, the medium goes, oh, yes. And he starts reading and he goes, was he tall? Did he have this direct, a big, goofy laugh that you can't get rid of? And, and sometimes you see a bird and you think of him. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, he has a message for you. And then goes back into spiritual medium. <laughs> and then the play just continues. He doesn't, he like, they were off on timing, I think, and had to get back into the dance. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> He just bailed. And I swear to God, as the gay angels were twerking in their feathers and their wings, spiritual medium, <laughs> I can hear the girls go, oh, I guess he's not going to finish. They left him edging the dead sentence. Yeah, life hits you. Life hits you. 
I had a medium come up to me at the farmer's market one time, interrupt my phone call, and was like, I'm so sorry to interrupt your phone call. I'm just, I am, I, this is going to sound so weird. I can see people who have passed, and I just, I see a grandfather figure. Do you have a grandfather that's passed away? And I do. And I was like, yeah. She's like, can I talk to you for just one second? And I was on the phone, I think, with Sarah. And I was like, um... I'm kind of busy right now. And she was like, just one second. I'm sorry. I'm, I swear I'll prove to you that I, and, and then I get off the phone and she says a couple of vague things about being close to my grandfather and loving him and being like his buddy, <laughs> just like <laughs> standard. If I loved my grandfather. Um, and then I'm like, okay. And she's like, so I can continue this reading. If you could just give me a small donation. I'm like, this bitch. For like the worst crowd work you've ever seen. Pulled me aside, <laughs> sat me down. I mean, got me off the phone. I was like, no. And a small part of me wanted to be so fucking petty and follow her and just ruin the rest of her day and be like, she just did this to me. She's going to ask you for money. <laughs> Like a small part of me, I told Sarah on the phone, I'm like, if I didn't have something to do in two hours, I would literally ruin this woman's day for the rest of the day because I hate her for doing this. It's such an evil person. You're co contacting people that are like, miss their dead loved ones. You're sick. You're sick. That's why, you know what? I'll say it. there's a bunch of things about, well, I'm just speaking for me personally in my own life. Now, I'm not perfect, and I've done fucked up things. I've been maybe too mean sometimes, but I do have empathy, and I think within my job, I'm even if I'm heckling someone, I never actually try to hurt people's feelings. I never try and say something that they're going to go home and think about at night. Like I've seen comedians go too hard on people where I'm like, dude, why would you make this person feel bad, like genuinely bad about themselves. I'll say things like, you know, like that are funny, but then I don't know. I just don't like to hurt people's feelings. Right. And I will say genuinely in my job, I don't think that I'm hurting anyone personally. Maybe I've said things that have offended people, but those people are hurting themselves. Life's a little offensive. You're getting scammed. You're getting scammed every moment, every, every blink of an eye. Every purchase you make. The grocery stores, they just found out Walmart's been adding weight to the scales so that when you're weighing your groceries in the self-checkout, you're paying for more than you should. That's why you should steal from them. I saw something about rubber blueberries. I didn't, like, die. I saw that, too. What's yeah. going on with the fruit? The fruit's fake now yeah, or something? Right? It was, like, a Whole Foods thing. People were finding, what is like, that? like, foamy kind of blueberries in their... Blueberry. Yeah, people are finding fake blueberries in all of their blueberries. I don't know what's going on, but I will say. I saw it and I said, that's too much for today. I can't get into that. Yeah, what's going on? Mom calls out Whole Foods after discovering something about her daughter's blueberries. There are fake blueberries in the blueberries. I don't know what's going on with that. That could be a weird thing where, like, one person decided to do something fucked up and put a bunch of fake blueberries in a bunch of blueberries, but... Yeah, someone who was going to quit Whole Foods. Yeah, they were <laughs> pissed. Maybe they're sending out a message that the blueberries aren't real in the first place. Maybe we should listen deeper. Ever notice that the blueberries don't make your fingers blue anymore? You ever notice? I guess I haven't noticed yeah. that. You ever notice? Did they ever? That's a good question. Do blueberry blueberries Google blueberries making your fingers blue? I think they used to. If I'm, but now they're like white on the inside. I think if they're a little older. Go to images. Now that is the are the inside of the blueberries blue or white? Yeah. Didn't they used to be blue? Maybe I'm tripping. I think maybe you used to have some Nordic. Ones. Oh, not me having the Oh, okay, Nordic. Hot. All right, fine. Now I want a blue blueberry. I'm telling you right now, go get go get some strawberries. They're in season right now. And I, I must have in in the 33 years of my entire life, I had a strawberry from specific. Re whoa, <laughs> from pavilions. And it was like bright red all throughout and the inside and everything. And it tasted like, dude, I don't know. I would have fucked for that strawberry. <laughs> I would have blown for that strawberry for another bite. That's how good it was. Anyways, that's our episode. <laughs>
<laughs> you guys, thanks so much for listening to the pod. Uh, shout out to the Comedy Store Studios for having the pod. And um, make sure you check out The Magic Prank Show on Netflix with Justin Willman. Uh, make sure you check out my special Childless Milf on YouTube right now. Um, and my other podcast, This Bitch with Sarah Wine. <laughs>